Hey guys, this is Dan Seifer from Mobileburn.com. What we've got today is the brand new Droid Charge from Samsung coming out for Verizon. Uh, it's supposed to be released yesterday actually, but it's been delayed now. We don't know exactly when it's going to be released, but we've got a test model here for you that we're going to do a full review on, and right now we're just going to unbox it, take a look at the hardware itself. So looking at the box here, it's got a pretty nondescript Droid branded box, pretty similar to other Droid boxes we've seen before. Cracking it open, we've got the phone itself here. Let's get this powered on. Underneath that, got your LTE card. As we know, this is an LTE model. Then we've got some instruction manuals. Looks like various languages and such. It's a pretty thick instruction packet. One of the more instruction ones we've seen, or a thicker instruction packets we've seen. As you can see, you got that droid boot animation there on the charge as it powers on. Underneath there, we've got the micro USB cable, and that doubles as your charging cable as well. It plugs into this little charging brick over here, plugs into there, plugs into the wall, charges. Seen it before, you know how that works. This is where the battery normally would be. Verizon preloaded the battery for us, so it's already in there. That's where it normally would be in the package, and that's it for the packages and accessories. Alright, taking a look at the phone itself, what you see here is we've got a massive 4.3-inch uh, uh, Super AMOLED Plus screen. It's 800 by 480 pixels of resolution. Really is bright and powerful and colorful, as you can see. We'll take a look at that more later. Below the screen there, you've got uh, four actual physical buttons for menu, home, back, and search, which you don't see too often, um, but uh, we're happy to see them there. Up on top, you've got some proximity sensors for uh, light and uh, light sensors, and then you've got a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera and an earpiece there. Taking a look at the side of the phone, uh, this phone actually has a micro HDMI out underneath this flap here and then you've got your power, sleep, and unlock key on the side here like we've seen with other uh, Galaxy S phones. Now this phone's not technically branded a Galaxy phone, it is carrying a bro uh, droid branding but it is very similar to Galaxy phones in the way they've laid out a lot of the buttons and the features and stuff like that. Um, one of the big differences is this actually has physical buttons whereas the Galaxy line of phones generally has touch sensitive buttons. Looking at the bottom of the phone, there isn't too much here. The you can see this kind of bezel comes to a point here, almost like a, a shield shape, and that's got a, uh, a microphone port there. Over on the back, we've got an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with a flash. Get this sticker off here. And then you've got a speaker grill. On the other side of the phone, we've got the micro USB charging port, volume up down keys, and what looks to be like a lanyard port up there. And then on top, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and looks like a, another uh, noise canceling microphone port there. Opening up the battery cover itself, you can see that yes, this is a 4G LTE model. We've got our 4G LTE SIM in there. Uh, this is the second LTE phone to come out for Verizon when it does hit market, um, following the Thunderbolt. Then over here, we've got a 32 gigabyte micro SD card pre-installed and the 1500 milliamp uh, battery over here. Uh, Samsung's claiming to get uh, 11 hours of talk time with this battery, so that's quite a long period, so we're going to put, certainly put that to the test during our review. And so that's a quick look at the hardware. Um, next we're going to take a look at the software of the phone and see what kind of uh, apps we've got going on here. Taking a look at the software here, the Samsung Droid Charge actually runs Android 2.2. It's got Samsung's TouchWiz customizations on top of it, but it's a modified version of TouchWiz than the ones that we've seen previously on Samsung's Galaxy models of phones. Uh, it's got a lot of Droid dif uh, customizations and, and features that, that differentiate it. But we've got our puzzle lock screen there that we can unlock and go straight to our home screen. Home screen consists of seven panels. Very similar to the TouchWiz models that we've seen. Uh, you can pinch to zoom, rearrange your panels, you can set different ones as the direct home panel. 
by default it is set to the center uh, home screen. Preloaded are a few touch with widgets, uh, weather widget, stock widget, news widget, and calendar widget. Uh, here you got your feeds and updates from TouchWiz, so you can uh, access your feeds from various social networks. On the other side, you've got a standard Google search widget. Then you've got uh, various Verizon applications that you can see here. You get access to the Verizon App Store, a Tours, VZ Navigator, preloaded a data usage widget. Um, you got your camera shortcut, mobile hotspot that you can turn on and off here, and Samsung's Media Hub, and then Google Maps. Buddies Now is a widget to add contacts to, so you can add some favorite contacts there. And then you can easily uh, view them and see the access uh, messages and call them and, and message them directly. Taking a look at the notification bar up top here, what we have is a familiar Samsung TouchWiz notification bar, just with a different color scheme than what we're used to seeing. Instead of the normal blues and greens, we've got kind of this brown and tan and yellow color scheme going on. But you still have the convenient uh, toggles up top to turn on and off different services such as Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, GPS. You can disable your data right there and toggle the rotation as well. The phone dialer, this is Samsung TouchWiz dialer again, but also with the different color scheme for the Droid branding. You can look at your contacts. Again, Samsung's familiar contact screen here that we've seen on other TouchWiz phones. You can access groups, call history, and message history. Uh, and then you can also access different social network activities. The messaging application is uh, very similar to other Samsung phones as well. Uh, you've got a skinned messaging app here that has bubbled conversation view. You can create new messages directly from here. You can add multiple contacts or an entire group if you'd like. You can also access uh, recently used contacts. Down here you can see that Samsung has a custom uh, keyboard here instead of the standard Android one. We found it to be pretty responsive, and it's got uh, spelling correct as well. Now, if you're not a fan of the standard keyboard here, you can tap and hold and switch to the swipe keyboard, which is also pretty installed. And that's uh, swipe that we've seen before, very familiar to us at this point. Opening up the app tray, you've got your side-scrolling app tray that is uh, very familiar to Samsung TouchWiz users. There's uh, by default three panes of apps. We've added one application here, so it pushed it over to four. Uh, you'll see a mix of applications here from Samsung and from Verizon itself. Uh, AllShare is the DLNA application for sharing media over a Wi-Fi network that comes with most Samsung Galaxy branded devices. Uh, and then of course you've got Amazon Kindle, which is preloaded on Samsung devices. Then we've got Verizon's direct link to their its own app store, where Verizon will uh, put recommended apps and stuff like that right there in uh, there for easy access. Uh, we've got Backup Assistant from Verizon for contact syncing. Bitbop uh, is a media client. Blockbuster there for downloading uh, videos and media clips. Uh, City ID, which is a Sam um, excuse me, a Verizon preloaded application. You've got Samsung's daily briefing and desk cradle applications there. Uh, your standard Gmail application, of course. Verizon's guided tours. There's also a preloaded instant messenger client, so you can access uh, instant messaging networks on AOL, Windows, and Yahoo. Let's Golf is a preloaded demo of the Let's Golf game. Um, Media Hub from Samsung. There's your mobile hotspot toggle again. You got My Verizon to access your account. Rap City there. Rockman's another preloaded demo game. Slacker is preloaded. Uh, Tune Wiki is another preloaded application. Vcast Media is a media hub from Verizon, and VZ Navigator from Verizon as well. 
So there's a fair amount of applications preloaded on the charge itself. Not too surprising coming from Verizon, uh, as they tend to preload quite a few applications onto their phones.